Good evening, basketball world. Good evening, teammates. I hope wherever you're watching this from, you're doing fine and your people are also good. Uh, my name is Sean J. McCall, as usual, and I am the host of the Eurostep here live on Instagram, uh, where we try to get a little piece of the background information from people that are in and around hoops, not just in, in Europe, but also worldwide. And that's why I'm really happy to have my, my guest here. Um, I would say my guest... For tonight's episode is a rising star in the world of overseas basketball. Um, he's a CEO of multiple camps, tours, platforms, apps um, that that will help players maximize their their dream of playing overseas. Um, Antonio Depina is my guest, and I have to say that I asked him to come on um, for this interview based on some negative information that I had, that I had received from multiple sources. Um, anytime I do an interview, I definitely check my, my facts and, and hear from multiple people. Um, so I reached out to him while informing him that I had heard some things from, that were not that, that positive, that I would like to talk to him about it, that he gets his side, because I, I believe in fairness and making sure that you hear both sides of stories. And um, so I, I reached out to him, and I, I have to respect the fact that he agreed to come on, even though it's under... Uh, different circumstances than what I usually do my interviews for, um, but let me make, make this clear: this is not this interview is not a witch hunt. I'm seeking information to make available for people to make their own decisions, to make informed decisions, and um, I really would like to hear his side of some of the things that that I have been critical about. And um, then you, as a user, you as a, a viewer, you can make your own conclusions. I'm not here to tell you. Um, what to do or what not to do. So that's that's my whole thing about about not just this interview, but everything that I do. I'm just never a witch hunt. It's never I'm trying to throw people under a bus, but to give factual information to help people. Um, so now let me get him in. I see he sent me a he sent me the should be here in just a second. Antonio, how you doing, man? Hey man, how's how's it going on? Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. I see you hear you fine. All right, perfect, perfect. I'm in I'm in Portugal right now, so it's kind of like just got here, trying to figure things out right now. What's going on? Nothing much, man. Hey man, like I said, um, I don't know if you heard the intro, but I really appreciate you coming on because, like, when I reached out to you, you know, I told you that, that there were some things that I had heard that I wasn't really feeling, and the fact that you agreed to come on and 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 tell your side of the story or, or, you know, get your, your version of things and clear the air. Um, I really respect that. I got, I got mad respect for people who, who step up to the plate. So I just want you to know, this is not some kind of witch hunt. I'm not trying to dog you. I'm not trying to do anything. I just want to make sure that the people that trust me and my opinion, that they hear all sides of the story. And that's pretty much Pretty no, much it's, it. it's not a witch hunt, man. Um, I answer any questions. Um, you could, have I didn't see your DM till later. Right. But um, but yeah, man, I'm here for anything. You know, I'm, we're, at the end of the day, you're here to help players. Same with right. my, you know, help guys. You know, reach their dreams, reach their ultimate goals. So, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, as long as the the, the job gets done, you know, I'm, I'm here to help anyway. Anyway, any question, anything you have to say, you know, I'm always. I here. appreciate that, man. I appreciate the openness. So we just where, where, where are you located man. before we start? Where are you located? I'm in Germany. That's I was just about to say. I'm I'm <laughs> because we don't know each other like that. You know, sometimes with my guests, most of them, I I've had some kind of contact with before we do the interview but with you it's a little bit different so i was going to actually introduce myself so my name is sean j mccall uh -huh. where are you where are you uh, from though like are you from you're I'm from in germany but where are you from i'm from vegas man i'm from oh vegas. man you west coast so, guy so yeah so I, I i've been over here since uh 95 i've actually lived in europe longer than i lived in the states ah uh, so, you like it better right yeah i love it yo love man it. i like it better i've been telling everybody like yo i think that like the way of life like the culture like the way it's like slowed down here is like better than america yeah, I, there's no way, no way I'm moving back. Ah. So, so, um, so yeah, I, I was a pro for 13 years in, in uh -huh. a bunch of different countries, and um, and then I went started coaching right after I retired. Went okay. um, here in Germany and coached for nine years here in Germany, also in the first league. And so I've kind of seen both sides of the of the coin. And now okay. I'm a I'm a teacher actually. And um, you speak since, you speak uh, German? Yeah, I speak fluent German. Ah, I nice. German. I only know a few words. And, uh, so I'm a teacher now, but I, I just started this uh, player education specialist thing just mm -hmm. because I saw that the need is there for mm -hmm. a lot of these men and women to be educated and understand right. how how things work. 
And, um, and part of what I do is talk to players, of course, um, about their experiences with agents or, or, or uh, camps or combines, things like that. So I, I get a lot of different input, um, a lot of different themes. And I really enjoy what I'm doing. And um, yeah, and that's, that's, that's pretty much my, my game. So what I'd like you to introduce yourself because I don't want to put words in your mouth or, or anything like that. So you go ahead and big yourself up right now. <laughs> big, I, don't, I don't really like talking about myself, man. If anybody <laughs> knows me, you know, I'm, I'm like real humble. Um, but yeah, my name is Antonio DePina. Um, I'm the founder of um, Overseas Connection. Basically, Overseas Connection is a mobile app that connects um, pro teams to pro basketball players. Kind of like mixing my love with technology and basketball, making a little baby with it. That's what I call Overseas Connection. So um, I made Overseas Connection in 2020. You know, I played pro professionally overseas. I played in Portugal, yeah. France, and Spain. And um, I made a little, like a little baby. I call it a little baby, you know, it's concoction. You know, um, just trying to make it easier for players. Um, from my baby, you know, I kind of um, stemmed different projects like Overseas, Connect, um, overseas Combine, CVBL, uh, Euro Swim League. You know, I have like the main thing, and then I have little things that kind of stem from it just to help guys, you know, get overseas contracts. Um, and have an overall great experience. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, as you know, you know, it's only for so many contracts. Yeah. So alongside, you know, chasing your dream, um, how can you have the most fun? That's what I always tell guys, you know, when they come to the events, like, you know, focus on the main thing, but also try your best to have fun, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, life is short. Let's try to make the most out of, you know, opportunities that we have. So I always, always tell these guys that, and um, that's kind of what I've been doing, man. I've only been in this business for two years, so I'm not like you, man. Been there, been there for a long time. So I've only been doing this for around two years. Um, but you know, I love it. I, I, um, I mean, I of course did my checking up on you as well. And, and the fact that you've grown so much in, in, in two years really speaks volumes for, for what you're trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish. I mean, obviously you're a smart dude. Um, so that's, that's, that's all, all great. And I, and I, I've told, I've told, um, people that I talk to as well that I, I really see, I, I'm, I'm, I'll be honest about this. I really see you being a, a, a mover and a shaker in this in this uh industry for years to come my my hope is that some of the things that maybe we'll talk about tonight will like maybe we'll we'll check back with each other in a year and some of those things are maybe a little bit different you know what i'm saying and that's that's i think that's that's why you're here you ask know? me anything man anything <laughs> that's, that's, I, I, I you you can't understand how i appreciate you being on man so <laughs> So let's get right into it, man. When did you first decide that, while you were a pro, when did you first decide that you wanted to go in this direction? Um, well, I was playing in um, Spain, Leb Silver. Mm -hmm. um, so I was, I was in that league. And um, I was kind of like, the, the, way I, the way I did it was um, my first job. I'll start with that. My first job was in Portugal, first division. Um, I got the job networking myself. You know, I had an agent. Obviously, I had an agent. He was in Spain. But I got my first initial job networking myself. So I was like, oh, snap, it's easy. You know, I mm -hmm. thought it was easy you know, to get a job you know, like everybody else. You got your first one by yourself. So I was like, Yo, but I, wait, wait, wait. Let me interrupt you real quick. But I, but I read somewhere that you wrote like 500 people. So you no, I was writing grind. everyone. You man, were on your everyone. grind. It wasn't like one letter. OK, I got a job. Yeah, yeah, it was everyone. Okay. So every morning I, I was working at the YMCA. So before I, I opened up the YMCA, I would sit down and just send a thousand emails talk to everybody, send my film. And I got a hold of one guy, um, the coach, and I appreciate him to this day. Um, he actually wrote me back and he was like, yeah, we're looking for a guard. It's a team called Electrico FC. It's in Portugal. We just got promoted to the first division and it was perfect for me. You know, um, and I'm, always, I'm always grateful for that opportunity. It wasn't a lot of money. Obviously, you know, you know the, the first job I was paying, I get to pay like 500 euros a month. Like it was, yeah. it was nothing compared to, you know, I could have worked at home. Oh, but yeah. I took the opportunity and I, you know, I, I made the most of it and it stemmed off to different um, opportunities after that. But to answer your question, you know, um, I got the uh, I got the uh, the idea for Overseas Connection when I was playing in Spain, and I had a guy. He was on my team from Sudan, and he was like, "Yo," uh, I said, "Yo, why are you playing in Spain, getting paid like three hundred euros? Like you're seven foot two, you could have went to America, played D one, or do anything." He said, "To be honest, bro, it's the only opportunity. There's no opportunities anywhere else. I don't know how to get it." I started thinking to myself, like, "Yo, it's 2020." How are guys not like like how it's like we're still like doing it the old ways where we have to talk to an agent we got to do this we got to do that and uh, I was like yo maybe there has to be another way so I like the whole year I spent just thinking about like what's the other way what's the other way and that's when I got the idea to start an app and so 
that's what I want to talk to you about first, like the, the or actually, no, different. The first venture I want to talk to you about is the, the basketball combine event. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of combine kind of things going on right now. I think it's kind of in vogue and, and um, players are signing up for these things, these events. They're pretty normal. You pay a, 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 a fee, play a couple games over two, three days, things like that, and then hopefully you get noticed. Now, my question, can you explain exactly how you showcase the talent that, that comes to your, specifically to your combine? How do you showcase sure. them and... Um, and do you work with like European agents or something like that? How do you, how do you work that? Well, um, like I said, it all stands for overseas connection. So it starts from there. It starts um, from, okay. Yeah. It starts from overseas connection. So overseas connection is like, it's the mom of everything. So overseas connection, we have deals with, um, not deals. We have partnerships with clubs. So for example, we would, I would say like we sponsor for the thing. The difference is, I don't tell nobody this, but the difference is between overseas connection and other like, I don't know how you call them, like pay as you go. I don't, I don't yeah. even know what to call them. Like, you know what I mean? Is we actually have partnerships and sponsorships with these clubs. So you might see somewhere, like if you, if you go through like Spain or Portugal, you might see a little Overseas Connection logo, uh, a team called, um, what was the team last year? CB Alphaden. They changed their name to OBC Alphaden. They was an EBA because okay. we sponsored the club. So we got these sponsorships and then partnerships that, um, you know, if they sign a player from Overseas Connection, we pay for their flights. We pay for different things, different ways. Like just trying to change up different ways. Okay, how do we help the club? If it's not financially, how can we get the best player? How can right. we do this? How can we do that? And uh, that that kind of has been working for us. You know, we get guys signed through our partnerships and sponsorships, and trying to help these teams out, whether it's in any way possible. Because you know, it was the, I started around COVID time. You got to remember, right? A lot of these Tough teams, time. you know, sponsors were dropping, right. and it was harder for these teams. So I built relationships during, it was, it was kind of like a blessing in disguise, you know, God kind of made it happen around like the way it's supposed to happen, you know? And, um, you know, their sponsors were dropping. They were like, and I was coming in at the right time, like, hey, uh, you know, your sponsors dropped, but we can help. What can we do? How can we make this work? Okay, you need to sign two imports. Okay, we have that. And then it kind of been stemming from that. And ever since then, it's been, it's been going like that. So to answer your question about the overseas combine, what we do differently as far as that, that's how it starts. But we have a two-day event. It was three days before, but I felt like it was too long on the player. So the first day is like a skills and drills. I bring in a pro trainer right. and um, they go through these drills, combine things, you know, similar to the NBA, NBA draft combine, things like that. And then the second day they play games. So this summer we're about to start, I think next this weekend, we're in Atlanta. So we're gonna start next week, this weekend in Atlanta. And it's like a two day event, like skills and drills, games. And they're all live streamed. And you know, we have, like I said, it starts from the overseas connection. We have the partnerships. Okay, they need this player, they need this player. Who can we put it? Like who, who's the best player in the combine? Who can we put up? Who's 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 marketable? Who's a good professional? You know, it's so many things you as you know go into like right. the player. You know, because right. so many things. Like I, I could tell you a story about the CVBL this year, man. It was like I didn't know how like how do you say it? Um, I didn't know how arrogant American players could be on the outside looking in. Now you kind of can see like you know what I mean. Like it's like yeah, so I, know I didn't realize you know being so new into it, but it works. So you have you have these different combines throughout America, mm -hmm. and so what are you what are you telling these players when they register as far as how they'll be seen? Is it just is it just from the live streams, or do they also get videos? I'm talking about strictly with the combines right right now. We'll talk mm -hmm. about the other ones later, but strictly with the combines, what's the what's the pull for them to join the the combine? Is it that they get film, or is it that they um, that they get seen on the on the live stream, or do you actually then push certain players for jobs, maybe with one of the teams that you sponsor, for example? Um, no. So, for example, it starts off with uh, like actually the partnership. Um, you know, they have to watch the film. They have to watch our, our combines. They have to take note of these players. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I'll say a team, like a team in Portugal, in Pro League. Say we partnered with them. And they say, they say okay, I have, a, I have a Zoom meeting with them. We talk. Um, okay, they're going to be tuned into the Atlanta combine. Okay. Where's the roster? Send them the roster. Okay. Now, we do the research on the players. We have everything with their Instagram accounts, everything. Um, but after that, they, uh, they kind of tune into the, to the live stream, if that makes sense. Like, they watch it. Okay, this guy plays at 1 o'clock. Let's watch him. Antonio, we like him. We don't like him. Da, da, da. You know, I don't, after the, the team likes the player and the player, you know, they communicate or whatever, we put, we make, put them in the, into contact, we kind of get out of that process. You know, let them, if they have an agent, you know, we don't really work with that process. But as far as, like, getting them noticed and then seen and then 
the first first communication, we're kind of in that prim like primary process. Okay, so th so the first draw is just to make sure that that your partners that you work with and maybe some other coaches are able to see them live during those two days, um, especially. Yeah, when yeah. Try to get okay. the most eyes on them. We also have guys in uh, in America come through, like um, agents, like the TBL. We're really close to the TBL. Like any opportunity they could possibly get, like anything. Like I, I have a good relationship with the CBL, so um, with Mike and them and those guys up there. But you know, it's a summer summer thing too. But you know, I try my best to get them seen by everything, every aspect, everything, because you never know the most, like, what opportunity lasts, you know. Like, you never know, like, what something could lead you. You know, meeting this guy could lead you to this guy. Meeting this guy could lead you to this guy. So I kind of put everything in one, and then I, I give it to them like that. Okay. And um, as far as the players from the combine goes, what I've heard is that, that you also then select a few that maybe are more talented to then go to um, – maybe go towards the Euro Summer League, what you're doing in Portugal. You had one in July, you got two in September, right? Um, yeah, but the Euro so that's, Summer that's, League... That's by invite, right? No, the Euro Summer League is a totally different um, tryout. Okay. Yeah. So, but are you are you pinpointing guys from, from the Combine that maybe have a chance to go with to the, to the European Summer League? Say it again, I'm sorry. Do you pinpoint guys from the combine to then go with you to this Euro European Summer League tour in Portugal? Oh, do we pinpoint guys from the overseas combine to go to the Euro right. Summer League? Right. Right. Um, no, Euro Summer League has its own trial. It has its own okay. trial. Like like we had trials to think in February this year. Okay. It's like the Euro Summer League trial and then they, they, they get picked from there. Okay. Uh, and so the Euro Summer League is kind of where I'm heading next. Um how do you evaluate? So you said that there's a there's a, a tryout for the European Summer League. Yes, sir. How do you um, how do you use the criteria? What kind of criteria do you base um, those that you want to invite then to come with you to Portugal? What what kind of things do you do in that tryout where you say, okay, these are the guys that I that I think might have a chance to 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 play and move on. So I'm gonna maybe ask them to come to Portugal, for example. Can you hear me? I, I can hear you fine. Can you not can hear you see me? me? Can you see me? I see you fine. Okay, perfect. Because you kind of cut out. I couldn't really see you for a second. Okay. You need me to ask it again? This Portuguese Wi-Fi, I'm, I'm like lost. <laughs> you need me to ask again? Yeah, towards the end, I, I kind of got cut off. You said the criteria. So, this is the criteria yeah. for the Euro Summer League, right? Right, right. Um, the, For the Euro Summer League, it's a, it's a whole new thing. Um, Last year, we did the, it was called the Spain Showcase. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, I, I kind of tested the theory. I wanted to see if... um. I kind of got it from um, Euro Pro. Some Euro Pro, the guy. I think that's yeah. I talked to Brad. I think early in the game, I talked to Brad. I was talking to him about like you know like everything he's doing. You know, I, I loved it and I loved the idea of bringing guys to a, a foreign country. I thought it was special. Outside of basketball, I think that's special. You know what I mean? Especially coming from America, and majority of the guys are are black. You know what I mean? Bringing black guys, uh, brothers to to Europe and just to see things. Even if they don't get picked, it opens their mind up to to a lot of different things, you know what I mean? So so I always always liked that. And then I started the Spain Showcase just as a test, just to see if it would work. And it did. So that's where it stemmed from. And I created, I created the Euro Summer League. And the Euro Summer League, basically our criteria for that is is mainly, are you professional enough to come to another country? Because you can't bring, excuse my language, an asshole to another country and then it just be dumb, dumb stuff. You never know what could happen. They could smoke weed, right. they could do, right. you know what I mean? It's just, it's like so many things that you got to kind of take in mind, you know what I mean? And then it so, makes you look bad if they mess up. Yeah, because anything, they're not going to say, oh, Joey messed up. They're going to say, all the players from, your, like, you know, all the right. players from Europe, all the players from Europe, all the players messed, like, you know what I mean? So, so I kind of yeah. like, first things first is most professional. Are you professional enough to go over there? Do you get mad when you make a play? You miss a play. Are you, uh, are you blaming teammates? You know, mm -hmm. things like that. I try to bring the best character guys overseas. You know what I mean? That's the main thing. And that's not even just Euro Summer. That's with every, every, everything I do from, from CBBL, connections, everything. You have to bring the most professional. That's like the first thing at first. Then we value, evaluate like the games. Like we, we there, the games. Uh, Euro Summer League, the trials, I wasn't there. I had my staff there. And um, they ran the whole thing. So they got to choose the players. But it was, it's really off the professionalism, how well they play in. Can they even, like, can they come into another country? Can they culturally change? Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's very hard to explain. Like, can you culturally... You got to be different. Yeah, be different. It's, it's so hard to explain. Like, can you 
actually come here? Like, will you appreciate the experience? And that, that's like the main thing I, I, me, I personally base it off of. And um, one of the, one of the, okay, now we're going to get a little bit into the, the stories that, I, that I've heard. Um, one of the stories that I heard from one guy was, was something about the, the WhatsApp groups. Like there's like hundreds of guys in the WhatsApp groups. And, and um, so it seems from, from my perspective, and I don't know if this is true or not, but from my perspective, it seems like it's more about quantity than quality. No, the WhatsApp that was that was an accident. That was like an accident link. Okay. You know, you had the WhatsApp link, right? Yeah, yeah, it got sent out, and I think there's um, our emails got leaked too. I don't know if any guys ever came to you and asked about um, there was like a a Russian team like emailing guys. I don't know if anybody came to you with that. They've been they've no, been no. talking to us. I don't know if they got a hold of just our players or if just a lot of people. Okay. Are it, but it was like a a Russian team was like offering fake contracts. It was it was hard for us, you know, right there at that point because it was like. They were mainly our guys. They were like, "No, do not send no money to these guys." Like it was like it was tough, but yeah, that 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 was the, that was an act. That was like a leak of the link, like the WhatsApp link. Right. So one of them got flooded out, and then we kind of like had to fix it. So like our WhatsApp chat now is just the players that are confirmed. Okay, and it, it was pretty. It was pretty good. I mean, I also realized there's a lot of things that are trial and error. You mm -hmm. do something, some things work, some things don't. So I'm I'm not trying to. Uh, throw you under the bus for that. It's just one of the things that I heard that it was just a ton of players, and it seemed like for for the guy that told me this, it was it was like, okay, where where am I? If if, if there's too many guys in here to be kind of uh, or things to be selective. I don't. I, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't so, know what group chat he's talking about. Okay, and um, one of the. You probably didn't see it, but one of the things that, that um, I posted a couple of days ago is, is also um, when I talk to players, I tell them to investigate these combines, the, the tours, do do their due diligence and, and check out things. And one of the things that struck me as a little bit odd um, when I was going through the rosters that you just released for the Summer League. Um, for the Summer League or the Combine? Which one? For the Summer League, for the European Girl Summer League. Okay. Uh, so you you got all the, the the players their listings and and their sizes and things like that. And what I what I noticed is that is damn near all guards. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's going to be a mixture of Euro it's Europeans and guards. The Europeans we didn't we didn't add them yet, but we had it's like far last summer we had a, we had Europeans play with them. Right, I heard you had you had the the, the Portuguese guys playing as yeah, yeah and we mixed some like like for example like one of the teams like they need a big so we had like a, a six seven center come like it's like different things like that. But. My thing is, is like, okay, I, and I also watch two games or I watch two portions of a game, of games, two portions of games. Um, my thing is this. I, of course, I coached over here for, for a long time and I played over here for a long time. So I kind of understand the, what coaches look for. And mm -hmm. when, I was watching, when I was watching the first video, the first live stream, what I noticed is that, first of all, there were just a whole, whole bunch of guards. And yeah. second, I mean, ball, that's a lot of guards. <laughs> so, yeah. Like most, I mean, like for example, like most of like American players are like, I think I feel like more more bigs get picked up easier. Like yeah. from my experience, like bigs get picked up so much more easier. It's easier to market a big than a, than a guard. But you know, it's difficult, you know, to find those those those, those bigs. Like right. you know what I mean? So so right. we try to we try to mix them up, you know, with the European bigs or like this session. Like last session was our first time doing it, so we had to add like bigs as we went. But this year, like for this session, we have like a. A good amount of size, like, and, and for the European guys coming in, but I think we should be good this session. Because what I was gonna say is, like, when when I was watching, I was like, "Damn, this is a lot of guards that's going up and down." Guard Basically heavy, from, man. You just seen the threes they were shooting. It's like Steph Curry exactly. all over the court. So for me, as a as a as a, I mean, I'm pretty Europeanized. Actually, I I have an Austrian passport now as well. But oh man, um, you must so, burn, burn the USA one, man. <laughs> so um, so for me, as someone who, what I tried to do was watch these games as from the view of someone who coached and would be looking at this for scouting purposes. Okay. I'm going to look at these players. I'm going to see which ones I like or, or things like that. And what I, what I found difficult was that it was just so much up and down that it wasn't, it wasn't indicative of how, how it's going to be for them in Europe. Mm -hmm. So my question is um, how are you going to be able to change a little bit that, that, that Americanized thing mm -hmm. where they understand that European basketball is not dribbling 10,000 times mm -hmm. before you go one-on-one -on -one with somebody. One-on-one, -on -one, exactly. <laughs> so, 
so that that was what what was 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 disappointing for me to see as someone who's who's watching it as a scout for example um and so my question again is just like is there any way that you can bring in coaches that are that are maybe european coaches that can school these guys on on such things for example i'm sorry i'm a little bit long-winded with this one uh, <laughs> i was i was also at a couple of months ago in june i was at the euro euro pro basket in mm -hmm. valencia and there they had i was also as a i came as a coach and so of course i know the game and the other how was it there. oh it was, it was i love didn't even get to ask you how was it it was fantastic i it seen fantastic. you i seen like a picture of you like i think you were talking like were you like doing like a speech yeah yeah so yeah. it, it was fantastic and um so my so i kind of i think it's normal but i kind of compared th what that what i what i lived there to mm -hmm. what i was watching from from the euro summer league what you're doing and so that's why it was for me a little bit a little bit yeah it was difficult because i could see that those guys don't have the mentality like this is not they were bringing their their american game over here and trying to showcase that american game but that's not the reality of what coaches want to see i think yeah i, I think i think with guys um it's kind of tough you know i, I think we should do we should, we should like this see this 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 session where we're doing things a little bit different but i think with american players when they when they come to these things, everybody has this mentality that they want to kill. Like, oh, I'm gonna come and kill. I'm gonna come to right. Portugal. I'm gonna come to Spain. I'm gonna kill. I don't think they realize that. Yeah, you're gonna try to kill. But some of these guys in Europe, they they're tough. You know, the guards are tough. Yeah. The guys are tough. They don't call fouls. And it was just like, it's it's very very hard. Like you know what I mean for for guys. Because I remember, like I try to look at it from my perspective. You know, from from a guy who who tried to. I can't. I, you know, I played professionally, so. Like, I was like, you know, when I first got the deal, I'm like, yo, I'm going to go over there and kill. I'm going to be this. I'm going to score all the points. I'm going to do all these things. So I had to adjust. You know what I mean? I had to adjust. I had to learn the pick and roll system. I had to I had to, to pass the ball. I had to, I had to play within the system. I had to know emotion offense. I had, like, so much more thinking involved in the European game than the USA game. You know what I mean? And in certain leagues, I feel like it's different. I don't know if you, like, I don't, you probably know the same thing. Like, in Portugal, for example, when I played in I Portugal. I played in Portugal as well. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, like, I feel like in Portugal, they let the American players just play. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like they just go out there, score me, just win the game. When I was in Spain, however, it was more so, um, you know, run this system. If you learn, nobody in ACB is, is averaging over 30 points per game. Like, nobody in, in, in Spain is really putting up 30 shots a game. Like, it's just so systematic. Like, you know where you're going to get your shots. This guy's going in. This guy's going on the cut. This guy's cur curling on this end. Like, pass the ball. And I was a point guard, so it was, it was like, okay, you got to run this system. So it's, it's, it's kind of indicative, like, for example, these guys are coming to Portugal. Most of the teams I had watching were in Portugal. So, for example, I think that for the USA players coming to Portugal, I think – I'm not going to say that USA game makes sense. It, it fits better for the it Portuguese. It fits better for – yeah, exact, exactly. And I, I think that, that that's what I was trying to go for. It. But, yeah, man, they were checking up threes like it was Steph Curry's uh, go to State Warriors team. <laughs> You've seen the games. But, but no, I think, I think what we tried to do um, – it, it kind of worked out the way the way I, I, I personally wanted. You know, five guys got signed, so it made more sense for me. Um, as, as far as the future goes, as far as what we're going to do in the future, I kind of want to do – there's so many things I want to do, man. I could just I could just tell you off camera, like, like things like how, where I want to go with this thing, man, because I want, I, want I want to make it bigger than anything. So with the Euro Assembly this session, we're doing things differently. We're flying guys in um, as far as coaching staff, trainers – uh, things like that, because I was kind of tied in with the with the CBB at that at that time for the first session. But yeah, you probably a busy dude. Say it again. You probably a busy dude. Oh man, I'm I'm trying. I had to I had to relax, man. Like like I have a girlfriend that's pregnant. I'm about to have a baby, so I'm like I'm trying to relax. <laughs> like it, it was a lot. But um, but you know I'm, I'm trying I'm trying to I'm trying my best. You know, so with this like example, I want to build a gym in, in Cape Verde in my country. I want to call it the Overseas Connection Arena. I want to instead of doing things in Europe, I want to bring them to Africa. Like, all right, I'm going to tell you this plan, man. Tell me if it sounds good, okay? Okay, go right, I'm going to tell you the plan. I was thinking, I was really talking to my girlfriend the other day, like, yo, I think I should do this. I want to make an arena, right? It's called the Overseas Connection Arena, like a basketball arena, however you want to put it. Instead of doing, like, a tour in Europe, I want to do a tour in Cape Verde. Cape Verde is, like, in, it's like, it's like very close to Portugal. It's like an island, kind of like Madeira, however you want to call it. Um, but I want to have a connection academy. For, like, a month, these guys come in. They play all month work on the game, get trainers and guys like yourself to come in, teach these guys the European game, like really teach them. And that last week we fly in all these coaches, maybe like 10 to 20 coaches for that session to come in the last week 
it's like a vacation for the coaches if you think about it. <laughs> but then they, they sit there on a beautiful island, and then they, they can watch these guys play at the Year Overseas Connection Academy in the gym. And I think it's very, very dope, you know, especially for, for a poor country like where, like Cape Verde. I think it would be good beneficial for the, for the kids, give them something to look up to, and also beneficial for the players, giving them, you know, giving them, you know, that, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to call it, I like, I don't know how to call it. Like, I've seen this, I got this idea from something called the Y Combinator. It was like a, a tech. Oh. Yeah. And it's kind of gives these guys like something like. Something to shoot for. To shoot for. And it's, it's right. different, you know, coming to Africa is different. You know what I mean? So, so I'm, I'm trying my best, man. I'm trying my best. And I'm trying to do different things out of the box. And I, and I think it's going to work. I, I, my thing is this, like, I, I think everybody has their right to their ideas and, and right. to, to make them grow. And, and Oh, man, you're not feeling that idea. <laughs> no, 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 that's not it. No, that's not it. That's not it. Not at all. What, what I want to make sure, though, is that that um, what, what here's here's I, I'm going to be totally honest with you. My personal opinion uh -huh. of everything right. that you have going on right now is that you've grown incredibly fast in a mm -hmm. short amount of time. So. Some things are, are, are lacking, some areas are lacking. We can talk about this another time, but some areas are lacking where it, it's more out of the fact that you've grown so much and you, you're, you're doing good things, but some things are being, being left behind. And it, 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 seems like, it seems like your growth is at an expense of the little things. Your idea in general is is actually fantastic and especially to do the cape verde thing is is i think really fantastic you're because... you're you're oh wait so can you hear me i can hear you i can hear you now go ahead okay so what i was saying is i think what you're what you're doing especially with cape verde is a, a, actually a very positive idea and something that, that you could definitely develop and grow what i what i would hope is that you you tidy it up a little bit like some of the things and that's that's... that's that's the most important thing that the players feel like Okay, this is this is not only something that that will grow um, for me professionally, but also in other aspects as well. What did you want to say? I'm sorry. I think that like um, no, sorry, sorry to cut you. I don't want to cut you off, but mm. I think that um, as far as like tidying things up, I think that you know, I think that like uh, not only with overseas connection, with, but like with all the other things, other things we're doing. I think that it's not so much as tidying it up. I think we should look at different aspects more for example i'll give you an example um for euro summer league so still euro summer league for example i think it's a little bit different because we did it one time with spain so we're kind of adding things and we keep adding things and we keep doing things new but i think that being that you know you're probably you're, you're probably comparing like you said you're comparing it to the things you were at right. and those things have done time. They made mistakes. Yeah, exactly. I, that you know I understand. I mean? so you I can, understand that. Like, it's yeah. like comparing a, I don't know, Nike to a new, like a new brand. Right. No, we have grown fast. I, I agree. I think we've grown fast, but I think that um, that we are growing at a good rate. You know, we're young. Yeah. We're young guys doing it. You know yeah, what I mean? Ambitious. So you got to think ambitious, and, and you know, sometimes it, it goes that way. But I think for the most part, we're getting the job done. Guys are getting signed. You know, we're doing, I created a whole professional basketball league. Yes. Guys got paid on time. Guys, you know, granted, you know, things are different from last year to this year, but guys got paid on time. Nobody got paid late. Um, everything, you know, they just signed the contract was taken care of. So that's, that's kind of like where I'm at with it. But, you know, like I said, man, we're going to keep tidying things up. We're going to keep growing, keep, keep the screws tighter. And then we're going to keep, you know, making this thing do what it does. Okay, I got. I do have a lot more ideas, man. We gotta get on the call. We gotta get on the phone. We're gonna have to get on the call. Talk. We're gonna have to get on the call. We gotta talk. So, man. I got one more critical point about the Portuguese summer league that I wanted to run past you. I did a interview with a guy that was there. Um, it's on my YouTube Kai, channel. Right? I, I meant to send it send it to you before, and I've told totally it. Kai, Kai, um, Kai, Kai, right? Yeah, my guy. And, Kai. and um, and he told me some things where I was kind of like, "What the fuck?" And one of those things was just <laughs> like, where where he he kind of mentioned that that. Um, he, he did mention that you were a little bit understaffed due to COVID, that your staff picked up COVID. That I, that's, that's you guys' thing. Oh, right? talking about my staff? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, they came from and Cape they, Verde. Um, and Cape Verde to Portugal requires a COVID test, but all most of them got, got COVID that weekend. So it was very, very tough for them to come out. So, I mean, we made it work. Um, like I said, like the end goal was the end goal. You no, know, we got five guys signed. 
But like I said, I mean, and I explained that to the guys that were there, you know, like, oh, listen, man, this is what it is. We're here together. You know, it is what it is. You know, I have guys coming in and out, but we're going to make it work. And um, so guys, sorry, could, sorry. like, so say it again. Go ahead. So guys, no, it's okay. So guys could do like, like, it was like a, it was like a family thing. Like, I think this is the best experience I personally had doing an event because it was me and I got to really get intimate with the players. Like, I think some of them are even on this chat right now, but. I got to get into with the players. I got to know their dreams. I got to know their goals. I got to know like what they're here for at the end of the day. And it kind of made it more valuable to me. So I feel like that first Euro Sim League session was very, very like in depth for me because I got to make not only meet these players, but I got to become friends with them. Cause at the end of the day, man, I'm I just turned twenty seven. So I'm like the same age as these guys at the end of the day, you know, to be honest, like Kai, all these guys. So these guys were like I got to really know, like I asked them a question. Um because we have like meetings, ask them one question. It was, uh, what's your why? Like, why are you here? Because everybody has a story. Everybody has problems. Everybody has a story. And when they, when I got to hear their whys, it was like, yo, like these guys really, you know, have stories to tell. Like you can't just think about the player, think about the person too. Exactly. And that kind of like changed my mindset when I was talking to these guys. Like they were like telling me their lives, telling me, you know, like, you know, I have a kid and I, I'm trying to provide for her or, things like that and it, and it was it was it was like so much more meaningful to me and i'm actually glad that happened because i got to get really instead of just throwing staff at them and saying okay these guys do this do this i'll be doing this and i'll make sure the teams are here i got to actually talk to the players and it meant so much more for me you know what i mean it just meant so much more so kind of took the negative out of things and making more positive and i'm here to help you know what i mean um from from the the portugal event so you had you had one one in july and you've got now two in September coming up. Yes, sir. Right. We got two that's sessions. A, that's a lot of guys that are coming through. No, it's, it's not that many. Man. It's, it's like uh, how many guys like, you got coming in for the September? It's like twenty, twenty something between twenty and thirty. I'm the exact yeah, number. sessions. Uh, yeah. Like for example, the July session just passed. It was around like twenty five to twenty eight guys. Okay. So, was, so what I'm wondering is when when the guys sign up for 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 that event for this particular event, mm -hmm. um. They, of course, they all want to get signed. But of course, I even though you cannot guarantee anyone anything, you can't exactly. guarantee anybody. No, I guy, but some some guys even show me texts of like, <laughs> this is crazy man. There's a guy that's like they show me texts of some guy that like guarantees you a job for like two hundred, three hundred dollars or something like that. Yeah, that's that's uh, yo yeah, the scammer guy. I know. Yo, I'm not. I, uh, I can't make this up, I, man. I was like, I know, I know him. yeah. Okay, know. okay. So it's not just me. That I was like, yo, no, what the I hell? Know. I know. I, that, that's know a, that's, that's enough. I don't know him personally, but I know his scam. Okay. And that's that's one that I warn my, that's one that I warn my people about. Yeah, you you you're warning about him specifically, or <laughs> no? Just no. I just know how he is. I know how that situation goes, and it's terrible. It's really taking advantage of people, and that's 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 um that's ridiculous, man. But I I know that that's not what you're doing. I'm just trying to make sure that that as you grow, that you you make sure that the people really feel that what you're doing with them you're for in, them. Uh, sorry to cut you off. You're in you're in Germany, right? Right. I'm gonna bring you out to the second session. I'm gonna fly you out to the second session if you're available. I won't be to... available for this one. It's too close. I got a family man and my 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 job uh, starts. Oh, in... not no the, the September 18th to the 24th. Are you free then? Yeah, no, I'm I'm not. I'm in school. Oh man, I got a normal nine to five, man. What about what about a weekend? Can we fly you in for the weekend? We'll we'll, we'll talk, talk about camera. it. We'll talk, we'll talk about, about it. Okay. We'll talk about it. I think I think it'll be um, beneficial. I think these guys need to hear your voice. I think they need to, to, to actually meet you. I think it's it will be better. Like for example, for the overseas combines. Right. I always start off with a speech. Like I think, like, like since I've done, I feel like the players appreciate it more, and they get to like, like not saying you're unappreciated, but they appreciate. It. Like I figured out, I found out that they appreciate it more when you talk to them in person. Like when every time the overseas combine, when I'm there, I personally give a speech. You know, before every event starts. Like I, I talk to everybody. I'm like, Yo, my name's Antonio. I'm the founder of Overseas Connection. I'll shake your hand like a man. I'll look you in your eyes. And um, this is what I'm doing, you know. This is what you guys are here for. You're here to. You're not here to bullshit. You're not here to to play around. You're here to get a job, and there's only but so many. You know what I mean? So you kind of got to be real with them. Look them in the eye, so they know you're not playing around. Because you know they're not playing around. I'm not playing around. This is this is a livelihood. So you kind of gotta. And me personally, I think I've I've found that to be more beneficial for me the way when we do things. So when the I want, guys I want come to meet you, man. <laughs> when 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 the guys come to your your. We're still on summer league. When you guys come to summer league, 
um, are they in, under the impression that they're going to get a job, or what do you, what do you, how do you think that they, they see what you're doing as, as far because, um, what, 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 what I hope is that these guys are not coming over here with the expe expectation that all of them are going to get jobs. No, we have multiple Zoom meetings. Okay. Anyone can tell you we have multiple Zoom meetings um, about the overseas. I'm not the overseas. I'm tripping. Um, about the Euro Summer Leagues, we have multiple Zoom meetings. Um, we talk about the Euro Summer League. We talk about, you know, what to expect, how it's going to go, how many games you're going to play, you know, things like that. And, 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 it's, and it's crazy, but, it's, but they, they love it. Yo, these guys love it. I'm trying to tell you, man, that the, that Euro Summer League session was, like, my favorite group of guys. Like, I, I'm sorry, everyone else who was here, but some of them are even on here. One of the guys that got signed is, on, is actually on the chat. But, like... It's, 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 that was my favorite group of guys, man. I can't even, I'm not even going to lie to you. That was like my favorite group of guys because you got to get in, in depth with these guys and really talk to them. So like it, it, made, it, it made it feel so, I felt, I felt good after that one. Okay, now let's move on to, um, let's move on to the Overseas Connection app, your baby. Oh, my baby, yeah. Let's talk about so, that one. So, so I, I understand how, how this goes and I'm not against these kind of platforms at all. Um, I have one. Sure, man. You're sure you're not against it? I, I no, I'm not against that. it. I'm against one particular part, and I'll tell you that in a second. It's not just you. It's it's the everybody that does kind of stuff like this. Okay. Um, but it's not a, a huge thing. It's just something I think players need to understand. Um, so basically, it's the same thing. You 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 pay for a prescription. You get access to to uh, knowledge about openings. Um, what else do they get out of their, out of their prescription? Um, actually, man, I'm actually working on something. I'll, I'll even let it let it drop here. I'm actually trying to make it free for everyone. Okay. I'm gonna make it free. Um, I'm working on those things, trying to see. when We're talking to developers because I'm I, I released a new app like a week or two ago. Like everything was brand new. The old app I scratched it and I, and I developed a new one. But um, yeah, basically I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it free so guys can go in there, make a profile, and uh, boost the subscriptions up. Well, not subscriptions, but the the user rate. And, I, and that's where I'm going at with it. But when, they, when guys pay for it, I can talk about the previous app because the new one's still getting made. And, it's, and But the previous one, like, they would – I kind of take myself out of that unless a team wants me to put, like, an opening up. But now I have a, a player's app and a team app, kind of like a uh, Uber, like Uber. Like, they have a driver app and the, the Uber Eats, like, where you can order the ride or, or the food or whatever. And um, I kind of uh, – did it like that because I don't want to. I don't want to be the reason. You know, I don't. I wanted to take my eliminate myself from the whole posting of jobs. Yeah. I don't want to post them. I don't want people yeah. to feel like I'm posting jobs. So I, yeah. I kind of made the teams have their own app. I just approve them. They go on there. They post their openings. I kind of give them a tutorial. I have it in all languages: German, French, Portuguese, Spanish, every language, and um, they can do it however they want to. So I kind of do it like that, and um, that's how I've been. That's how I've been doing it. The, a player doesn't have to sign up. You know, they they can choose not to. Of course, yeah. Of yeah, course. yeah. It's, it's only for them. If they want to do it, the team sees them, they like them, it, it is what it is. So I like the idea of, of making it free. The one drawback that might come is is that, um, this is just me thinking right now, um, the one drawback that I see is that then it'll be full of players. Yeah, uh, it'll be too full. Right, and, but, and the, 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 it'll be a lot, of, a lot of quantity and not quality probably. And... That'll probably also make it harder for the teams to kind of weed out which ones are, which ones are, are not that great or wouldn't fit their their kind of thing. So I don't know. That's that's something to think about. But um, the one thing that I have a problem with, and it's not just with with your app or it's just these these kind. I think of I think we have the only app. I think we, is there no. Another there's app? another one. There's a uh, Pro Connect. Is the app? Yeah, they have an app as well. Yeah. Oh man, they 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 jacking the style, man. Dang, I didn't even know there was another app out. So, um, so the one on my only problem is, or not problem, but I'm um, kind of concerned is, Jesus. I understand that in theory you get the the players. Oh wait, we're breaking up. You you still see me? I see, you, I see you. Okay, so you get the the players, you get the coaches, you put them together, you kind of step out of it, and you let them deal with it on their own. My 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 problem with that is. You're, you're you're giving a service or you're providing a service but when they if they go to i don't know egypt for example uh yes. they get, a guy gets a contract in egypt um there's nobody there to take care of them if you get fired or injured yeah i, I see i see you posted something like that and, I, and it makes perfect sense so what we do is we have fiba agents like on my payroll not really i don't want to say my payroll but on, mm -hmm. our, on our staff okay. yeah and then um 
so yeah, when a guy signs specifically from the app, we give them the option, you know, like I said, I stay out of the, the, the posting of the app. But once a team, you know, wants to sign this player, we've had it before, and, the, and we have the agent, he kind of butts in and they, okay, do you want to be represented by this guy? Do you already have, excuse me, do you already have an agent? Do you have these things? But I haven't had that problem yet. And I do see it being like a concern. I understand where you're coming from, but I, I personally haven't had that problem yet uh, with a guy getting fired, a guy getting hurt, you know, God, God bless, you know, God right. willing, you know, we never had that issue. But, you know, I, I think that problem, you would need an agent. That's why I never say, you know, nobody needs agents. You know, that, I think that's, that's like a myth where you say, you don't never need an agent. You will never need an agent your whole career. I think people who say that is like, it's crazy to me. Yeah. Um, I think that you can get jobs without an agent. 100%. I think so as well. You know what I mean? I think you can, you can, you can, you can, like you said, like how you do, you kind of like, I've seen what you do. You kind of like show them the whole, the whole pie. Okay. This is what you do. Like you're consulting, you're telling them exactly what to do. And I think that, yo, you can get your own, you can go and get your own job, Yeah. but don't, when they don't pay your ass, you know, like, cause I haven't got paid before and I needed my agent to go get the money, you know, right. go, oh, we're going to threaten, we're going to send FIBA on you. Da, 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 da. So yeah, I think you need an agent when it comes down to that. But um, to answer your question, um, it makes perfect sense. But we, we kind of try to get agents involved with, if that was to happen. If it were to happen, it hasn't happened yet. Okay, that's, that's, I think that's a valuable point that, that should be developed as, as you go along with, with what you're doing. That somehow that the agents that work with you are in the background if, some, if something pops off. If they got the job directly through your app or your, your services, whatever, whatever services you, you have, that, that the guys feel that there is somebody there for them protecting them. Because um, I've, I've, I've seen, I mean, I've, I've seen it a ton of times where guys didn't get paid and they, and the team just take advantage of the guys. That's why I, I really try to stress with anyone who, who I speak with that, yeah, you can get a job and you write just like you did, man. You write. You got to get on your grind. You got to write to the teams. You got to write to agents. You got to do all, all, all of that. Um, but in, in, in the end, you're going to need somebody to protect your, your interests. And I always say that you, you only know a good agent if you have a good agent in one of three situations. First, they, of course, they, them getting a, you a job. That's the main thing. But that's normal. That's for everybody. But how they react if you get fired or injured, that is the, the biggest Thing to will you will you know how good your agent is? Are they able to um, get you a good buyout? Are they able to protect you if you're hurt as far as um, medical issues or or finding a, a second opinion or things like that? Or um, or even if they're able to get you another job after you've been fired, they, these things happen. I, I got fired one time. I had a job like four hours later. So um, they, that's that's the life. That's the life, you know, and that's the only times that you really, really understand if you have a, a good agent and a good agent for me, that same guy might not be a good agent for you, but you need, you need them to have a career. I think you need agents, but that's a, that's a whole nother subject. Um, what out? Oh, oh, I got one more critical, critical thing. Oh man. You keep coming with these questions, man. Yeah, man. I, I got you <laughs> on here. So on? I got you on here. So I'm, I'm going to get everything out. On the app, okay. Uh, Sometimes you post uh, players on the app that I'm sure are not registered with the app. That these jobs that they're getting are are okay. kind of it, it. It gives the impression that the if you're untrained and you don't know if you're in America, you don't know what's going on. It kind of gives the impression that the people that you post on the on on the overseas connection that they're getting these jobs through you. For example... Are you talking we, about the app? Because we don't post on the app. We don't post... Um, oh, I'm sorry. Not on, on the app, app, but on the, on the Instagram, on Instagram page. page. Right. On Instagram page, we post news. We post news. We post signings. We post um, vlogs. We post, like, everything overseas basketball related. So we do things like that. Some guys, we do get signed on there. And some guys, we you know, we post their... their obviously, the, the news, you know. We ask some guys, you know, hey, we're posting it. We congrats, guys. You know, things like that. Uh, if they don't want to be posted, they, they don't have to. If they... We kind of tag them, too. It kind of broadcast, you know, our reach for OSIS Connection. You know, I think it's like, what's it called? The invite collaborator. Right. And we kind of like tag them as a, as a collaborator. If they don't want to be tagged, if they want to take it down, we take it down immediately. But uh, it kind of broadens our reach. It's like a way of marketing without paying for it. You know what I mean? So and, uh, that was a smart way to do it. In that, in that sense, I, I get what you're doing. And I, I actually, mm -hmm. it's not a bad idea. It's also cross-advertising. Cross um, my, exactly. problem, 
or what what as a as a trained person i look at it and and think one thing but whereas a, a untrained person someone that doesn't know how this is going on when they see your logo under or around these pictures i think it brings a misconception that those players came from you and yeah, I but, I, but we're not we're not here to, to 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 decide the misconception you know what i mean we're not here to uh to stop marketing you know what i mean so i, I mean no, as far as no, misconception, i don't want i don't really mean that our, our thing nope. to uh of to course. Really, you know, fix or anything. So, I mean, if, if we posting on Instagram a player like, my guy, Jawan Gray, I know Jawan for like five years. Remember, I was a player too. So a lot of these guys I personally know. So if I'm posting Jawan, I, um, I'm not saying, you know, Jawan, you know, we helped Jawan. I never, I never, I, I really put Jawan Gray has signed with Swedish, that are our marketing people do that. Right. And right. Um, if we do help somebody, even if we help guys get signed, we never even post like, we, oh, the connection has helped this guy get signed to this team. You know, we kind of like, okay, uh, this guy, this guy, I think, for example, Jamie from Euro Summer League got signed to CORE. We never put, Jamie has gotten signed through Euro Summer League Overseas Connection. No, we just say Jamie has gotten signed to BC CORE and he's going to be playing this year. So, I mean, as far as the misconception. So it's, more, not, it's more of a of, of a announcement. It's always, generic. it's always generic with how we do it, you know. And, I, and I, that was through our marketing team. You know, they, they kind of uh, wanted to do that and I, and I gave them the okay to do it. So So it's been working, man. I get what you're saying, though. It can it can come across differently, and I understand that. But um, you know, I, I we kind of I kind of let the marketing team do their thing, and I think it's been working for us. You know what I mean? I, I don't I don't really want to stop announcing news or doing vlogs. We're about to start a whole new thing where we're doing like a a podcast where we're going to uh, Italy. We're t we're talking to some of the Euroleague guys now. We're gonna go there and and vlog their day, and I think that's even more special. You know, getting these guys to see, like. It's okay to say, okay, he's signed, he's doing this, but when you can really see the vlog of a day in life of a Lyric Freeman, a, a day in life of, of these Euroleague guys playing in Italy, playing in, in Euro Cup, you know, Benfica, Sporting. You know, if I can see him, a day in life of him, and, and understand, like, what he actually goes through, it's special, man. It's super special. So I like that marketing aspect of, of, of getting the players involved with the Overseas Connection. Um, I've got a teammate question. Someone asked a question uh, before. And now we're moving towards uh, Cape Verde. Um, do you receive hate because you create your own league and how do you deal with it? Um, I didn't really receive hate until this year. Last year, you know, it was our first time doing things. When you're first time doing something and you do it really well, it's always love. Um, but as you know, if, if you're starting anything worth of value and you put your heart into it, there's always going to be problems. You know what I mean? As far as um, me being young, I think it, it comes with it. I think me being a young black male trying to trying to enter the world of a professional owning a professional league, it comes a lot with it. You know what I mean? Like I really own the league. I, I pay all the players, GM, staff. I run all six teams. So it, it comes with it. And um, I'm thick skinned, man. It doesn't bother me. I'm pretty sure people said things about you and it's like, yeah, so what? Like, I'm still going to do my thing. I'm still going to, you know, be great in, in what I do. So. Nah, you're gonna get hate regardless. Anything you do, whoever asked that question, anything you do in life that that you're trying to reach a level of success, you're gonna get hate. Period. Yeah, please everybody. That, yeah, you're gonna get hate. So just expect it. If nobody's hating on you, nobody's saying anything about you, then you're not doing you're not doing it right. You know, somebody's gonna always hate someone successful. So I yeah. agree. Um, another teammate question: Do players in the league get paid, or do they pay for everything, including their flights? Um. So we did it two different ways. Um, this year, or last talk, but last year first. Last year we paid for the flights, there and back, um, and they got paid. Um, last year was only like a three week league, three to four weeks, so it was really really quick. Right. This year I tried my best to expand the time, so the guys they came. It was like around I want to say two months this year. Um, it was around two months. They came for like training camp, and then it was like two month league. Um, I think it was a bad thing to expand the timeline. Because by expanding the timeline, it kind of stretched everything as far as funding, as far as, you know, getting these guys the best experience. So, you know, we made mistakes, I think, with this year, with the stretching timeline. But, um, yeah, you know, you always got to, you always got to, uh, you know, I, I'm a guy who doesn't make um, excuses, you know. You know, I know we made mistakes with this year's league, and we're going to fix them for next year. Trial and error. Exactly, exactly. And I, and I, I, don't, I don't give up. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to make it better and better and better every year. So we get it, to the seems, it seems to me that it's grown in popularity from the first year to the second year. Uh, 
how do you how do you structure the league as far as the, the players and who who comes to play there? How how does that go about? Um. Well, la- we had a draft both years. This year, I tried to implement something called like a training camp. So I had the guys come in. Um, <clears throat> as far as the training camp goes, you know, they would come in, they would play for the training camp, play the games, and then we had a draft at the end. Um, as far as that goes, um, the training camp and then the draft, they would get drafted, then they would play, you know, by the teams. I kind of, like I said, like how I keep myself out of the the um, overseas connection team and players. I kind of keep myself out of this part, this part of it, like the picking of players sometimes, because I'm very, very accessible. You know what I mean? I'm very accessible. So um, I talked to a guy named Mike one time. He runs the CBL, the, the, the league that J. Cole played in this year. Yeah. And he told me the one mistake he made from starting the league was being too accessible. And I think that's where I failed, was I was too accessible to players, too accessible to, you know, the, the overseas basketball community. And um, he told me, like, you know, Antonio, you know, you got to kind of, that was my mistake when I first started. I had players coming up to me saying, oh, this food sucks or this thing sucks because I was too accessible. You know what I mean? And I think that's where I went wrong. That's one of the things I, wrong. I was too accessible to, um, to everything. So I'm going to make some adjustments next year, man. A lot of adjustments are going to be made. Um, okay, time is running short, and I want to make sure you, you get on with your day. Um, one more question. It's, you... it's, it's night over here. It's early for them. Yeah, that's true. Um, oh, oh, wait, I've got one more question from so, – oh, where did it go? Where did it go? Where would the question go? Ah, um, what players has gotten signed that can vouch for what he's saying? I haven't seen anybody actually advocate. For which one? Which of I'm, I'm assuming for the summer league. I'm assuming. League? Um, I don't know if Marty's in there. I just saw Marty. He can vouch. Um, we just posted Jamie. If you go on the Euro Summer League, Jamie got signed. Some I of the guys we Jamie. haven't announced. Like I think like two of them we haven't announced because uh, the team hasn't posted it yet. So you know how that goes. You kind of got to wait for the team first. So um, so yeah. I mean, those two guys right there. You can go on Instagram, tag them, add them, find them, DM them. That, that's that's important that you actually that you say that because I also when I tell the, the players that they need to do their due diligence and, and check out all these combines or, or whatever, these events, then I always tell them, hey, reach out to people that were there before. Exactly. I mean, generally, players are pretty open about about giving information or trying to help other players. So that's one thing that, that players should do for if they, if they talk to me or if they decide they want to talk to me, consult with me or something like that. I have no problem with telling you who I – who I've worked with and, and things like exactly. that. So, so I think that's a really important thing. Do you get, um, more, you get more? I have a question for you. I wish I could do an interview on you, man. I should do one on you. So do you get more um, USA players or, or European players? 90% USA players because uh-huh. that's, that's actually where my market is is geared yeah. towards. But especially through, through I don't know, going through uh, Euro Pro Basket, the, their summer league, I got in touch with uh, some Euro, Euro players. Um, mm-hmm. I love, mm-hmm. I love what Brad's doing, man. I, I I told him like early. I haven't talked to him in a long time, but like early. I don't know if he's seen what we're doing yet, but yo, I love what he's doing. I, like I got a lot of my ideas from him. And it's, I tell it's, it's a really good program. It's it's, yeah. it's a really good thing. I, I love what he's doing. I tell guys all the time. I think I had a section in my app early, and it was like the Euro Pro. Uh, it was a link to his website, but it was. I, I love what he's doing, man. I, if I could talk to him again, I would tell him. But I told him early. I don't even know if he remembers me, but it was like early. I got one more question. Uh, do you rec- no no not, not that one where'd it go it deleted I, s- I saw that my guy Hoopstar had written something where is it um, his name is what Hoopstar what? Hoopstar huh? Canard what's his name Hoopstar Canard okay I don't, I like, I don't, I don't see it now I don't see it okay um, so but, I'm gonna get you out of here man what, okay. I, I want to know what your what your future goals for the league, especially. What what, what are your future goals for for growing all of this? Um, man, it's it's been a long twenty twenty two, man. You know, what I mean, we did a lot of things, we tested a lot of things. Um, but as far as overseas connection, because that's the big mama of everything. Um, I'm ready to grow. I'm ready to grow it to a to a level of, of um, as a tech startup, because it's still a tech startup but I'm ready to go get funding in 2023. Um, however that looks, whether it's a dollar or if it's 10 million, but I'm ready to go get funding for the app to grow it to not only basketball, but I want to grow Overseas Connection to everyone gets the opportunity for Overseas Connection volleyball, Overseas Connection football, Overseas Connection, you know, 
different sports. But um, as far as the basketball realm, we're doing a lot of things this year, this last fourth quarter. That's going to be a lot of, uh, not virtual, but a lot of like video things, like a lot of things to get these, the content growing, the content growing. And um, my ultimate goal, man, is to create an app and, and a platform for, for not just basketball players, but all athletes to, uh, to grow from and, and hit those professional ranks. You know what I mean? I think a lot of things are, are, are getting older. And I think technology can help us with a lot of things. Yeah. And, and things like guys like you, the guys like yourself, you know, I, and I think that um, it's helping everything just grow so much more, you know, being, being accessible to the internet, going on lives, yeah. things like that, showing your face to the players. And, and oh, so some guys hide behind a, a, a screen on Instagram. It's like the players will never respect you like that way. Right. And it's more respectable when you come and I'm going on live and I'm going to the events. I'm seeing these guys. I shake everyone's hand. I never leave no one out. I shake everyone's hand. I look them in the eye. And um, I, I'm here to help, always. It doesn't make sense. Some guy asked me, he said, um, a long time ago, he said, man, you know, there's a lot of scammers doing this thing, man. If, if you want to be good, you, you, can, you can just scam your way to the top. And I was like, yeah, you can scam. You can scam everyone. You can literally scam, scam your way to the top, but it's, it's not going to work in the long run. Because then it's gonna, they're going to go through the research like you told them to, and they're going to see that no one has gotten signed. Or no one's doing it. And then you end up like the guy that everyone keeps talking about who paid the $300. $300. So I try my best to keep the credibility. I try my best to, 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 to fix things. Because like you said, we grew, we grew very, very fast. Yeah. So I'm kind of like slowing things down, reevaluating things after this, and going to just start making everything better, bringing different guys in and, and making everything work. And that's the end goal. That's, that's really important. I think, I think you're, on, you're, on, you're on a good way. Um, and just uh, keep keep evaluating, keep figuring out what works, what doesn't work, what listen to the players, what they say. Mm -hmm. um, that would be my my uh, suggestion. And um, yeah, man, that's it, man. You hit the shot at the butter, man. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm gonna get you off the hot seat. I, I gotta ask you one. I gotta ask you one question. Hey, go ahead, man. Go ahead. Um, what made you want to like want to do this? Like what made you want to help basketball players? Because you could have been like, I'm 13 years in my career. I don't have to do anything else. I'm just going to be a family man. What made you take your time out to do this? It started with, it started with while I was actually a player with this. Uh -huh. You made a book. Well, Congratulations, man. That, that's tough. That's thank tough. you. So I, I, I was thinking about it when I was still a player, and I started writing it when I was still a player, but there was no, it's a very niche book. It's not a bestseller type book. And uh, I couldn't get it published back then. This is like in 2001. And then I just put it to the side. And now with, with self-publishing, um, I revisited it in 2020 when I had more time of all, uh, as well. And that kind of started this whole journey for me. And for me, it was, it was a question of giving back uh -huh. to those who are coming behind me because I know... I didn't have someone, I didn't have an old head. That's why I kind of call myself an old head. Exactly. I didn't have an old head to break things down or explain. Explain. I, I, there was a lot of trial and error with me. And um, I, I found my way. I, I had a pretty decent career. Um, and it gave me the life that I have now. So I, for me, it was all about giving back. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm all about. And um, yeah, and, and as far as the, the player education um, specialist thing goes, I just found that there isn't a whole lot of people that actually talk to the people and let them know. You can write a book, yes, no question. I know there's a couple of guys that are also have also written books and, and really good books and, and really helping people. Yeah, I, had I, a, thought, I have to cut you off, but I had a guy named Mike Creppy. He wrote a book. I know Mike. And, I know yeah, Mike. And, and what I did with him is he came to my overseas combine one time and I allowed him to, I think I bought like 30 books for the players, you know, just mm -hmm. to help because I, 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 I actually met him and he was a good guy. And um, I bought like 30 books, 30 copies of the book for the players so they could get them. And let them have like, have like a station, man. So I, I would love to do the same thing for you, man. Just, just get the copy to the players. Because at the end of the day, it's for the players. Exactly. I think that would be dope, man. So we can, we can partner up and do something like that where one of the combines, they can, they, the first 30 people get the book for free on us. And I think that would be kind of cool to do. If, you know, yeah, man. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll be in touch, man. Okay. I'm going to get you out of here, man. I appreciate you coming on here, man. No, Seriously. Definitely. Especially since I had some critical, critical, you know, oh, things man, to say. critical ones, man. I was nervous for a second, man. Hey. They weren't that bad, though. It, it, it wasn't that bad, but, but that you know, bad. I just want to make sure sure that, that, you know, the information is out there for the players to see and, and, and things like that. But you really impressed me, and I, I, I hope that you continue your growth. 
I hope that you that you um, yeah keep doing it for the right reasons and and make sure that that everybody not everybody's gonna have the, the greatest thing and they're not gonna get signed people are gonna get, be unhappy things like that 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 fucking happens we all know that but um, just keep doing your thing man and 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 um, and grow and, and do it for the right reasons man and, and everything else after that will come and I I, I, I congratulate you on your upcoming child. So uh, lovely, I appreciate lovely, it. lovely thing, man. I got three kids of my own. I got kids of my own. So uh um, girls easy. Uh, uh, that's that's another conversation. <laughs> I got a I got a teenager one and um yeah. So oh uh, man. <laughs> so um but yeah, man, we'll be in touch, man. And and I really appreciate you coming on and like I said, and 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 kind of answering the tougher questions and 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 putting yourself out there and, and that's that takes that that's a lot of respect from from my side. We got nothing to hide, man. We got nothing to hide. We got you know you 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 kind of got to just grow through everything. Yeah, nothing to hide though. We're fine. So man, get on out of here. I'm gonna hit you up and then we'll talk. Appreciate it, man. All right. All right. Take it easy. So everyone, I hope that interview gave you some insight to what Antonio does and what he's trying to do. He also admitted that there's some things that he needs to change up or or, or reevaluate and and that. I appreciate him coming on and, and 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 telling you good people out there what what he does, and um, I hope I hope everybody will give him a look and give give him a, 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 a an ad, a share, a follow, whatever. But if you go to his camp, if you go to his combine, if you go to his uh, thing in, in 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 Africa, if you do uh, the thing in Portugal, do your due justice, uh, due diligence. Check it out. Talk to people see what their experiences were and then make an informed decision. Don't make any decision, whether it be with Antonio, what he does or any other group um, without checking it out first. Don't get lost in the hype of, of social media and great postings, things like that. Make sure that the camp offers or combine or whatever offers what you're looking for and can, can help you reach your goals. If not, then you have to find another one. Um, so um, yeah, I hope to, to check back with him in a year and see how, how his progress is going and see if, if some of the things that we talked about are, are, are different, better, whatever. And But I, I was impressed, and I am really I really respect what he's doing and uh, that he came on tonight. So, yeah, that's it for me for tonight. I will post this on my YouTube channel probably tonight or tomorrow, depending on how much time I have. And so please... Share this information. Don't keep it to yourself. Share it with people who, who might be considering going to his camp so they can see, hear things out of his own mouth. Um, and let's help the community. That's what it's all about. Help the basketball community to grow, to learn, to understand. And um, yeah, that's it for me tonight. I hope everyone got some kind of good information. And yeah, I'll see you actually on Thursday for the next Euro Step, where I have a, a really great guest um, talking about players and how they take care of their bodies, professionals. So that's one topic. So that's, I think that'll be a really good one for those of you that are into fitness and trying to prolong your career maybe and things like that. But I'll, I'll do the re release for that tomorrow or the day after. So once again, I hope you're all doing well. I hope your family's well. I hope you're all safe. And um, anytime you need some old head advice or something like that, that's what I'm here for. So check me out and hit me up, follow me, share all of that good stuff. And um, yeah, I hope to talk to some of you soon. Okay, head out.